I smell a roast. Does it smell like roasted pumpkin? I can't wait to roast pumpkin with you, Jeff. Uh, before we start the roast, as always, guys, I want to give you one more chance. Uh, if you have not yet, please share this episode. Drop a comment in those comments. Be part of the conversation. One lucky comment at the end of the show will be picked to win this mug. It's the Snake Patrick's 2017 St. Patrick's Day mug. You cannot find this mug anymore, and uh, except for right here. And we'll sign it, send it out to one lucky winner. Man, the mug lifers are better at naming these mugs than we are. Oh, totally. We're just like, say. we're like uh, mug number six. Six this year <laughs> snake patrick so smart yeah so smart it's good i like it so yeah so pumpkins basically throughout all of october i want to keep the roasts in a theme of uh our october theme and i was thinking about pumpkins recently and literally i had the thought why are pumpkins associated with halloween and more importantly why are jack-o'-lanterns associated with halloween and maybe some of you guys knew this and i didn't horseman no not at all really um yeah um actually that's way later um, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow, Jeff. So pumpkins originated in Central America 9,000 years ago and are now one of the most popular crops in the U.S. with 1.5 billion pounds of pumpkins being produced every year in Did the you U.S. Ever see, you ever see, like, the big, big pumpkin contests? The pumpkin chunkin'? No, no, not where they launch them. Oh, in, that's no. amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. I totally <laughs> agree. It's great. But um, there are contests where people see if they could grow the biggest pumpkin. Mm. And you ever see how big they can get? They can get huge. Like bigger than people, like freakishly giant. Yeah. I had a neighbor that used to grow them, and we used to sneak over and steal some of them, and they were so heavy, we had to carry them back like miles through the woods, and he would come out and shoot us with salt pellets. Oh, great childhood memory there. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> um, So I can't think of another fruit or vegetable that's revered like the pumpkin is. I mean – you know, apples are associated with like apple pie and like the big apple and that kind of thing. And like, but pumpkins, because of Halloween and fall, like you get, you know, uh, decorations with pumpkins on them. We decorate pumpkins. We like, I can't think of another fruit or vegetable that like is revered to this point. Uh, I guess a Christmas tree doesn't count. Mm, that's as close as we'll get. Is it, is it, is it a Christmas tree? I yeah. think is it, is it as close as we'll get. Um, I didn't know this. They were used as folk medicine by Native Americans, and this practice was actually adopted by American doctors in the ni early 19th century. What it was used for was to treat intestinal worms because pumpkin actually helps you digest and flushes your system. Oh. So it actually wasn't like a like a crazy thing. It, it really did work, but Native Americans have been using these for thousands of years. They're just eating that shit raw or are they roasting it? <laughs> Probably eating it raw. They're um, roasting that root vegetable good. <laughs> yeah. There's also early folklore surrounding pumpkins um, being the favorite motif for witches to turn people into pumpkins or Sleepy Hollow with the headless horseman wearing a wearing a pumpkin. Or the chariot for Cinderella turns First into a pumpkin. Into a pumpkin. So like pumpkins were have been used in folklore like that for a very very lots of different reasons. But this one is the reason why jack-o'-lanterns are a thing. This is the legend of Stingy Jack. Yeah. It's an Irish folklore. And uh, the most po there's many different tellings of this, but the most popular telling of this, of this um, story is that Stingy Jack was a miserable drunk, and he loved to play pranks on people, his family, his friends, his neighbors, even the devil. And he pranked the devil once to climb an apple tree. What's the devil doing just hanging out? I don't know. Well, back in no, back in old folklore, the devil was always hanging out. It was always, the devil was always just around. Leave him alone. I know, exactly. <laughs> First of all, leave him alone. So he got him to he Wait, got, Did he know it was the devil? He must know. Oh yeah, he knew it was the devil, so he he, tri he tricked him to climb the tree and then he immediately surrounded the tree with crosses so the devil couldn't climb back down. Oh. And the devil was mad, obviously. And so Stingy Jack said, "If you promise never to take my soul to hell, I'll let you down." And so the devil says, "Sure, I promise." And so, uh, bad Sting move, dude. Yeah. So Stingy Jack takes all the crosses down, and the devil, to, the devil, um, gets out of the tree. Cut to years and years later, Stingy Jack dies, and he goes to the gates of heaven, and St. Peter's at the gates of heaven, and St. Peter says, "You ain't getting in here. You were a prankster and an asshole and a drunk and a drunk. Yeah, you're not going to heaven." So he sends him to hell, and the devil says, "I always keep my promises." So he doesn't take his soul. So he doesn't let him into hell. And so Stingy Jack's like, "What am I supposed to do?" And he's supposed to wander the netherworld and Earth for eternity. And he goes and he says to the devil, he's like, the devil's like, well, get out of here. You, you, you got to leave. But it's dark. As, after you leave the fires of hell, it's dark. He's like, how do I find my way back? And so the devil uh, reached down and picked up an ember of hell and threw it at him and said, here, 
Use this to light your way. And Stingy Jack had a turnip in his pocket. It was the style at the time. I don't know. So I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. If you get hungry, you get a little turnip snack. Yeah. He hollowed out the turnip and put the ember of hell in there, which lit his way um, out of out of the depths of hell and he wandered forever the netherworld and earth now what in irish folklore what it is is they would take turnips or other gourds hollow them out put lights in them put them on their porches and that would ward off evil spirits and keep stingy jack away from your house during the harvest so cut to the irish migrating to america and when they started to come over to america they were like holy crap what are these giant Orange, <laughs> orange gourds yeah. that are way easier to hollow out. Yeah, you know, and so they just poured that tradition over to a pumpkin because oh, they had never really? had pumpkins before. Yeah, really. And that was how. We, that's why we have the, tra- the the jack o' lantern. In fact, I have a photo right here. This is a traditional early Irish turnip thing, which yeah, is that's creepy. Way creepier. This is in a museum, actually. Yeah, it's super creepy. Wow. So that's like an actual. Yeah. Oh, super yeah. creepy. Super creepy. So then that got me to thinking, uh, for roast purposes, you know, carving jack-o'-lanterns. I mean, it's a tried and true tradition now, obviously, in American culture. And for Halloween, it is synonymous with Halloween. You have Halloween, you have the witch, the ghost, and the jack-o'-lantern. You know, like, I mean, and the skeleton. Like, like uh, those, those things are so Halloween, it's ridiculous. And there's so many good examples out there. Um, like, you know really spooky scary ones which a lot of a lot of times now i remember being a kid and you know the triangles and then the triangle yeah, mouth yeah. and stuff like that now you can do this kind of stuff with like stencils yeah yeah i remember getting the kid at a ki- as a kid and you would poke like holes that through the line and then spider-man yeah that's it's pretty rad really but I, but again you know the shitty thing about those kits what i hate about those kits is they're like here's a bunch of stencils and here's everything you need to do to make this thing and it comes with this blade that uh, immediately breaks always breaks yeah the minute and you guys know what i'm talking about like the minute you use it like just use a paring knife it works way better than and this that's tiny why little this saw. year we're releasing the death wish <laughs> pumpkin saw oh man we should <laughs> that'd be great we could team up with cold steel oh <laughs> that's why didn't we think of this earlier <laughs> Oh, God damn it. Next, next year, year. Next year. <laughs> but there's so many, like, these guys. Like, you've probably seen these on, on television. Incredible. The people who actually carve pumpkin. And the way they use it, that the thinness of the pumpkin, oh. the light shines through a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's incredible. It's incredible. Do I have another example? Oh, uh, I, have, I, have, I have funny examples, too, because, I mean, like, you could, like these aren't, you know, anybody artistic. But, I mean, how funny is that? That's super funny. And, like, oh. those, like, traditional ones, you know? What really bothers me. What really, really bothers me is jack-o'-lanterns and the idea of putting pumpkins out is the easiest, most fun thing to do during this time of year. You know, I mean, like literally, like I said, there were many years as a kid, like I would do it with my dad and it would just be triangle, triangle, mouth with the teeth. Yeah. And that's it. But then you put the candle in there and it's great. And we would roast. Did you feel like I can smell pumpkin guts Mm -hmm. right now? Did you ever roast the pumpkin seeds? Yeah, all the time. Oh, dude. The best, you know, because then you core hey, it out. You use the pumpkin t- seeds are good for the libido, Jeff. They are. Yeah, they're great. They're like one of the best foods for your libido. Well, when I was ten, I didn't. Ma- that didn't matter, but <laughs> but they were delicious, and we we used, we used to do that all the time. Um, oh, here's an adorable one. She just just you know just cute Aww. stuff to do with kids and stuff like that. What pisses me off more than anything is this trend of people painting pumpkins or using decals and putting crap on pumpkins. That's not a lantern. Because not only do people do this, this, this thing right here, with people painting on them, then they try to sell them. Ah. That's the freaking worst. Have you ever been to like a pumpkin patch or whatever and like, oh, buy my painted pumpkin? First of all, I could do that at home. Second of all, fuck you. Like straight up fucking. Why not you? just make a painting that doesn't rot after a week? Exactly. The whole point of a pumpkin is to carve it out so not only the light comes out and it makes a lantern, which is cool and creepy at night, but when it rots, it looks even cooler. Yeah. You go, yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't understand it. Like this, too. This, these are decals. Uh, decals worst. on a pumpkin. Like, so you're literally just buying this at a store and slapping it on your, your gourd that's, again, going to rot. I got another one, too. Yeah, look at that. Oh, don't you want that on your, on your porch? No. Boo. Boo. All right, listen. I didn't. 
I might have had a couple of pumpkin smashings back in my day. Yes. I, I've grown out of it. So have we so have we all. Yeah. But if Devil's I see, Night is a real thing. If I see your fucking painted pumpkin on your doorstep, I'm walking right up to that goddamn thing and I'm smashing it. I'm smashing it good and you're gonna have to pick up all the guts. Yeah. I'll even go this far. Guts. I'll even go this far. If you are someone who's very artistic and whatnot, decals be damned. Okay, you you going and buying decals and putting them on your pumpkin? Put them on your window. Put them yeah. on your car. Don't put them on a freaking. Don't just don't. But if you want to paint a pumpkin because you're a really good painter, fine. But put it next to a jack o' lantern. Do both. That way, at least Dustin won't smash it. No, because... I'm gonna pick yeah. that painted pumpkin and I'm gonna <laughs> smash your carved pumpkin smash. with it. Smash. You go all the way or not at all. Don't don't no. It's done. We're done here. <laughs> I uh, I do love this time of year, though, because uh, when people do create jack-o'-lanterns, it is fun to walk around neighborhoods and down streets and stuff like that and see different people's, you know, whether they use the stencil or whether they, you know, came up with some crazy, you know, you know, thing themselves. Dude, this time of year is always the best. It is the best. I feel like I, I can hear the leaves crunching as you walk through your yard. Yeah. It's just starting to get chilly, so there's no mosquitoes out, but it's like hoodie weather. I love hoodie weather. Yeah. It's the, it's the best time of year here. It's it is the best time. It is the best time of year. if you're not in upstate New York or in the general vicinity, vicinity, you don't actually know what we're dealing with here, and the summers are horrible, and the winters are horrible, and this is the best. I want to end on this, actually, um, that uh, um, actually most people do know what it's like up here during Halloween, because if you think about it, popular culture in Halloween for movies and television, more often than not, 90% of the time, is set in an in a New England type vibe. Mm -hmm. Very few times do you see a Halloween story, especially one involving trick or treating yeah. or jack o' lanterns or, or that kind of thing in LA. Yeah. Or Florida. Yeah. Or Hawaii. Or like some place tropical. It doesn't tropical. feel right. Right. It doesn't feel right. It's always with, you know, like leaves changing area. It's always like a little bit of a snowy, maybe not. You know, like it's always in either New England or upper North America, Minnesota, that kind of area, you know, like. Man, everywhere else is just missing out on this. Yeah. It, it, you know, there's so many bad times to be an upstate New Yorker. Pretty much it, every other time. Every other time. <laughs> but it's almost <laughs> worth it for October. It man. really is. It's happy, magical around this Happy October. Everybody. Happy October, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>